it's time to draw some terrain in our review of Cartographer Heroes from Thunderworks Games, so we have to thank for providing us with a review copy of this flippin' right. Cartographer Heroes was designed by Jordi Adden and John Brieger. Features artwork from Dave Baker and Lucas Ribeiro. It's published in 2021. Now, this is the follow-up to the popular flip and write game Cartographers, a role player's tale, and is part of the same setting as the game Role Player and many of the other Thunderworks games. This new version of Cartographers is compatible with the original version and all previously released expansions. This flip and write game can be played from 1 to 100 players, or probably more, as we've seen the game live stream before with tons of people playing along. In person, though, you probably want to stick to 3 or 4. While the box says this game plays in 30 to 40 minutes, our games tend to last over an hour, but not by a lot. The Cartographer's Heroes has each player playing a royal cartographer in a fantasy land heading out to the uncharted western lands. You start with a nearly blank map with the only feature being some mountains. Exploration happens by drawing cards which will show one or more terrain types and one or two shapes. Each cartographer will draw one of these features and shapes onto their map. Eventually, the seasons will change and everyone will score their maps based on a randomly determined scoring cards, as well as how much gold they've collected. At the end of four seasons, the cartographer with the most points wins. For those that know the original game, Cartographer's Heroes features a new two-sided map sheet and all new cards, including a new type of card, Heroes, which can damage monsters and protect squares on your map. Check out my Cartographer Heroes unboxing video on YouTube for a look at what you get in the box, including a nice thick pad of two-sided map sheets, some pre-sharpened pencils, and well, a bunch of cards, along with the rulebook. Component quality here is good, and neither of us has any complaints. You do <laughs> shuffle the terrain deck quite often, even during one play, so we can see people wanting to sleeve at least those cards. Now, you start off a game of Cartographers by separating out all the cards into different decks, generally by their backs. The season cards are stacked spring to winter. One scoring card is drawn of each type and placed where everyone can see it. A to D cards are placed above these and each player grabs a sheet and a pencil. Either side of the map sheet can be used, but everyone has to use the same sheet. One side just features mountains. The other side also has some impassable chasms. Note there are also ruin icons on both sides of the map. Those aren't used in this version of Cartographers. The terrain deck is built by adding one monster and one hero and giving it a very thorough shuffle. The game starts in spring with the top card of this deck being flipped over, and each player will draw one of the terrain types and one of the shapes on the card onto their map sheet. There are a variety of terrain, ter terrain types, forest, village, farm, water, monster, and hero. Most cards offer a choice of what terrain type to draw, usually of two, and one or more patterns you can draw that in. Patterns can be rotated in any direction but not flipped. Now drawing for the most part simple. Draw the matching pattern on your map, filling empty squares with the terrain on the card. If somehow it won't fit, you do get to draw a single square of any terrain type anywhere on your map. Now some cards will give you gold if you choose a smaller pattern to draw. This is tracked at the bottom of your map. Monsters are an exception. When a monster is drawn, you pass the map to one of your opponents who will draw the monster pattern on your map. Heroes are also special as when you draw them, they show certain squares they protect. No monsters may be drawn there, and if there's already a monster terrain there, they defeat it, and it is crossed off. You continue to flip up cards until the numbers on the top of the revealed card meets or exceeds the number on the current season card. When this happens, the round ends and everyone scores points. Each season, two of the four scoring cards are active, and all players will get points based on their requirements. These are really all over the place and include things like having a group of four village squares together, having water next to at least two farms, having full rows or columns on your sheets, etc. In addition to train types, players also get points for their current gold and lose points for every empty square next to a monster. At the end of four seasons, the player with the most points wins. There's a bit more to it, but all of that comes through on the cards themselves. For example, if you surround the dragon, you get a reward of three gold zombies multiply every round. This is very much an exception-based card games where the cards can break or change the core rules. Now, I've been hearing good things about Cartographers for quite some time, and it's been on my list to check out for a while now. So I'm happy Thunderworks hooked us up, and I got to check it out. This is a very solid game. Now, for whatever reason, I tend to think of flip, roll, X and rights 
as lighter games. I don't know why. Like, like just quicker party style games you can hammer through quickly. And despite playing some thinkier ones like Dice Kingdoms of Valeria, I, I still have that stuck in my head. So I wasn't expecting Cartographer Heroes to have the depth it does. There are some really hard decisions in this game, and the game really rewards thinking ahead and strategic play. Well, one thing it also rewards is game knowledge. Knowing what possible patterns exist can help you draw things a bit more intelligently. Now, while I wouldn't go so far as to say it rewards in-depth knowledge, just a vague idea of what sorts of shapes you're going to be expected to draw can help. Mm. I would recommend letting any new player at least shuffle through the deck for a quick peek if they are trying to be competitive with those people who have played the game before. Now, while the depth here surprised me, my first game, I was kind of shocked. I love it. I I think it's fantastic. Cartographer Heroes gives me the feel of a solid empire building Euro game all through flipping cards and drawing things on a map. I also found it gives me a solid sense of building something. And I love checking out my finished map and comparing it with the other players at the end of the game. Well, the first game you play of it will likely be a bit overwhelming, trying to learn and accommodate all the things. So I don't think you should expect that empire building feel until you're a little more comfort familiar and comfortable with the game. Now, the biggest downfall to this game is the writing, the drawing, whichever you want to call it. There are a lot of symbols in this game. Some are easier to draw than others. My first play, I was reminded of a different game we've reviewed called Doodle Dungeon. That's another flip and write, which also had a lot of symbols, but it actually gave you a little plastic template, a little stencil to use to draw those symbols. And I think that could have helped here. Now, to be fair, players could just simplify things by picking an appropriate letter or something really simple like an X, a triangle, a square, and a circle. As in general, you only really need to know what's on your own map. I've seen it also strongly suggested pretty much everywhere that a better solution is just get different colored pencils for each terrain type in the game and then block out areas of color instead of actually drawing. Now, we haven't taken that step yet, but I think it's going to be worth doing. And it's something I just need to sit down with my kids and say, hey, do you have some extra colored pencils I can borrow? Now, just writing a letter in it might be as solid a choice as anything. But what letters those letters might be isn't immediately obvious as you quickly get F for both forest or farm, for instance. Yeah, as long as it's clear to all the players, like it only actually matters when you pass for the monsters and you're like, what's the C? Oh, okay, that's for the water. Sure. Okay, whatever. Right. I don't think it'd be that bad. Now, jumping back to that, actually, that aspect of of passing your thing, I I actually really like this because one of the things I worried about with this game is that it would be multiplayer solitaire. Many flip and write, roll and write bingo style games are multiplayer solitaire. There's no player interacting. I love the fact that there is some in this game with those monsters. The fact that you pass your sheet to someone else who's going to mess with you is, is actually a big draw of this game. And I also like the fact that that if the monsters show up as a random thing, they may not come into play. You only add one monster each season. But if a monster doesn't come up during a season, it stays in the deck. So the later you go without monsters, more chance you have them. And we've had games where one monster showed up the entire four rounds. And we've had another game where Winter had three of them show up in a row, which really messed with everyone's end game. Now, this is another interesting aspect of that foreknowledge I was mentioning earlier. As if the monsters haven't shown up yet, you can try and limit where they might be able to go and the damage they can do if you know how they might be laid out and what pattern they are drawn in. Now, one thing you're not going to find in Cartographer's Heroes is a story in any real way and really any theme, because the theme here could be absolutely anything. Um, Well, the scoring cards may be called things like the Gnomish Village. And when you're drawing monsters, you're drawing dragons. It all just boils down to drawing abstract shapes on a grid. Well, sure. You could write a story based on the development of your lands and the heroes and the monsters. You could do that about almost any game you play. And there's no more (laughs) incentive for you to do that for this game than there is for Monopoly. So I got to say, possibly taking your end map and doing something with it could be a really fun experience for an RPG group, especially if you combine it with um, um, micro... What's it called? Oh, I'm I'm drawing a blank on the name of the RPG that's about making your setting background microscope or uh, there's a follow up to that one. I think it'd be interesting. And honestly, if you've done that, if you're listening to this review and you've taken a cartographer's map and used it in an RPG, I would love to hear about it. Overall, I went in expecting to like Cartographer's Heroes. Everything I'd heard about the game sounded like it was up my alley, but it ended up liking it more than I actually expected. I found the game to be much more brain burning 
with much more difficult decision points than I was expecting, and that was a good thing for me. This is also why my wife, Deanna, who's into heavier games, really loved it. Her expectations were lower than mine going in, and in the end, I think she actually enjoys it more than I do, and I do dig it. I'm really starting to enjoy these games more, despite being pretty mad about the entire genre early on. Uh, we are seeing a lot of different takes on it and some unique twists. Now, while I don't think this one stands out dramatically on its own from other flippin' rights, it does, however, benefit from having the large amount of expansion oh, yeah. material already available from the original game. So if you like thinky games with hard decisions that reward long-term planning, where something you did in turn one could come back to haunt you later in the game, then Cartographer Heroes will probably be a good fit for you, especially if you don't mind some randomness and other people potentially messing with those plans. Now, while I haven't tried it, and we aren't usually solo game players in general, I can see the small footprint of this one being great for solo play, uh, a regular, regular market for this sort of game. My wife and I... Also found Cartographers to be a great coffee shop or bar game due to its small footprint. There aren't many games that are this small that pack this much punch. It really does not take up a lot of a footprint. If you like some brain burn with your cold brew, Cartographer Heroes is a great choice. Just be aware that not only is there randomness, but also the fact that someone else has an impact on your sheet through monsters. And that someone might be more or less vindictive. This could impact your enjoyment of the game, though since someone else is doing the same thing to their sheets, you hope they won't be too cruel with their choices. Now, if what you want from a whatever and right is a fast, furious fun filled with comparing notes and laughter and flipping cards and doing a thing, you're not going to find that here. Well, flipping over a card and drawing the matching shape on a map grid is pretty simple mechanic. As far as mechanics go, it's going to take some thinking to be able to score well in Cartographer Heroes. Well, thanks for joining us for our review of Cartographer's Heroes from Thunderworks Games, a fantasy flip and write with some serious meat to it. What's your favorite roll, flip, whatever and write game? Let us know about it in the comments below, firing off an email to mo at tabletopbellhop.com or hit us up on social media. All right, that's three reviews in a row uh, we've recorded tonight, and you know what? I need more coffee. You can help keep us caffeinated and motivated at coffee. That's ko-fi.com slash tabletop bellhop.